sorry, this is very fresh for me because it's just happened this morning. A friend of mine, you know, posted something without posting anything about uh, hashtag Black Lives Matter. It's incredibly hurtful. It's incredibly hurtful, particularly to people that I considered friends. While I would otherwise love to read your favorite banana bread recipe, you know, while you see, and I know it's on everyone's feed, people screaming because they're in pain and calling out, it is necessary for me to, to have people, especially influencers, especially celebrities, to acknowledge that pain, right? I like to compare it to being on fire. Like if you were standing in a fire, you're in pain, and you have someone who's sitting three feet away who's not on fire, who's refusing to acknowledge your pain, and is twirling around with banana bread, it's the same thing. In your natural state of like being distraught or sadness, like if something extremely personal happens to you, I can't see how you can be in that state and post about it or be about it, and then five minutes later like post a cocktail mix or like you dancing. I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to post about Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and then in the midst of that, I'm posting about things that are lighthearted and happy and completely unrelated. White silence is incredibly powerful. It's not neutral. It acts like a weapon. It's not even silent. Like it speaks volumes, right? And the people of color who are around a silent white person, um, they hear the silence and they feel it and they feel what it means. Whenever I see someone who's not a person of color on social media who is not posting anything at all, it reads as either tone deaf or worse, being complicit. This is something that I've talked at great lengths about with my husband because I am watching. I'm watching who speaks out. And I'm not saying that you have to speak out and have this, you know, this whole spiel of Black Lives Matter. I'm not even necessarily saying I need you to post, but at the bare minimum, a friend would reach out to another friend. How are you doing during this time? I, I'll admit that I've been silent. I'll admit that I've ignored some of the issues that you face as a Black person, but I want you to know that I'm your friend and I see you and I hear you. I am paying attention to friends that aren't doing that. I'm a new mother, and this has been uh, particularly difficult and painful. So I look at my son and I see Tamir Rice. I look at my son and I see Trayvon Martin. When I see people choosing, because they have the privilege to choose, to ignore our pain and our fear, and the fact that it feels like half the time we are screaming into a void, and that people are not listening because it makes them uncomfortable. When I see that, I want to show them a picture of my happy child and say, George Floyd was that child. Tamir Rice was that child, et cetera, et cetera. Breonna Taylor was that child. That is someone's child. And so the very least you can do is acknowledge the pain. The very least you can do is hear us. All the incidents we have had with Black people dying, there have been other officers, other white people standing at the sides watching it happen. Why? Why couldn't they have just said, stop, man, stop? Why was that so hard? You know, one has to ask whether there isn't a certain amount of, of willful blindness that comes into play at certain times. Um, when, you're, when you're talking about persistent white silence in the face of so many invitations to speak. I think fear drives everything or prevents everything. People are afraid of saying the wrong thing. People are afraid of how they're going to appear. People are afraid of their lack of knowledge and people are afraid of the unknown. I'm starting to see a lot of people say, I haven't spoken out because I didn't know what to say. I haven't spoken out because I've been afraid. And I'm like, okay, no, yeah, like that ship has sailed. We, the month of May has been brutal for people of color with the instances that we're just seeing happen every week. We know it's happening, but it's on such a national platform. And it, it's, you shouldn't be afraid at this point. You should just do it. Just speak out. You should be so disturbed in the way that we are 
that you can't help yourself but speak out. We need white people to engage critically, honestly, repeatedly, thoroughly in the dismantling of racial hierarchy and white supremacy in this country uh, because they're part of it. As with any problem in society, um, we can't we can't solve it without the participation of the people who, um, even if they don't want to be, are largely responsible for creating and maintaining it. In every society, there's a social caste system, and white people in this one are at the top. And historically, if you look at even looking at the civil rights movement, Black people have never been able to do it alone and by themselves. And that's partly because we aren't looked at the same way in this society. We aren't on the same level. You know, if we're screaming Black Lives Matter, it's because you haven't been valuing our lives in the same way that you do your own. So if you're not valuing us, then how do you value our voice and our opinions and our demands for our rights? That is why we need the assistance of our non-Black brothers and sisters to help us in this fight, to show that we are America, we are unified, and we are all fighting for equality in the same way. Look at us all as one. Look at us as the same. Look at us using one voice to fight for change. Find the action that fuels you. If that means there's a protest today at three o'clock, I'm going in Times Square, if that means getting up and protesting, if that means donating, if that means speaking in your own words on your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, your outlet, your ways of mass communication, then do it. Stop hesitating. Stop thinking that you'll get it wrong. There is no getting it wrong. There's just doing it.